Okay. I hope you can hear me. Uh, thanks for joining this uh, this webinar that uh, I've uh, decided to call Climbing the Ladder of Abstraction. And what I'm planning to do here is to give you, uh, you know, a glimpse or some insight into what I think, where I think the future of cloud native needs to go, you know, in terms of the developer experience and how we empower developers to move fast, but with predictability and and while reducing costs, uh, this brings applications to the cloud as quickly as absolutely possible, but without risking the business or risking your jobs or risking, you know, getting your gray hairs and losing sleep over it. So let's get started. And we, we all want to do more with less, you know, we, we want to, you know, move faster uh, in general, but faster time to market shipping applications to, to our developers uh, as fast as absolutely possible. You know, often, you know, the, both the, the users demand that in terms of more features and, and we, you know, the business usually demands this in terms of keeping up with competition or staying ahead of the competition. Uh, but it's easy to move fast and break things. You know, what we also need to do is ensure that we do this in a cost-efficient way, in an e energy-efficient way. Uh, uh, they're, they're sometimes often the same thing, but not, not quite. Uh, but, and also do that you know, while making sure that what we're building can be run and operated in a predictable fashion. And the code that we write can, you know, can, be, can have repeatability and reusability. Because because you're in if you're building an application you're in it for the long game and and it's usually you know if if you build it the wrong way so to speak uh, then it's 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 very easy to end up with a big bowl of mud and that that, it's, that it gets more and more costly to to op, to to move ahead you know to op, to to both in, you know evolve over time but also operate over time so. All of these things matter, I think, and and it's we've been we've been getting you know quite far with uh, in in our industry, especially around cloud native infrastructure, the last years. Uh, cloud native infrastructure is actually amazing, nothing short of amazing. It's very it's easy to take it for for granted, but you know me that's been in, you know around uh, um, you know around the lock a few years, you know twenty years or something at this point. It's it's uh, you know when I, when I think back how we how we try to move like move this uh, or you know de de develop applications that do today what you can do quite fairly easily in the cloud you know it it has re drastically reduced uh, uh, you know the the burden on developers and developer teams it's easy to to take it for granted and it's almost hard to remember how the world looked before we had containers, before we had things like Kubernetes and the, and the great infrastructure uh, or ecosystem, I'd say, around Kubernetes, you know, all the things that you have in the CNCF and so on. And of course, outside the CNCF as well, not everything interesting happens there. But, but you know, the, the problem is that it's, it's not all good. It's, it's, it has been, you know, increasingly, it's been growing increasingly complex, I think, and, and we are to some extent, you know, drowning in complexity. And, and I think there's, there's something that we need to address, and, and there's hope, I think. And I will try to explain what I think we need to do uh, throughout this talk. You know, the big problem, the, you know, the, the main problem out of many problems, I think, is that the options are just overwhelming. There's too many decisions that each team need need, need to take to move to the cloud. Uh, you know, this this uh, image here is taken from the CNCF website. You know, they call it the landscape, and it's extremely impressive. And there are so many good good things here. Each one of these products individually is, are great. Some are downright amazing, but the image is itself honestly it reads almost like a joke. I mean, if, if you come into this new, how could you possibly navigate this? How could you know how many, which products you should pick and how to stitch them together into a single, you know, coherent, consistent, workable system that, you know, lives up to the guarantees that, that, that you need? Composition is very hard. Things usually break at the edges and, 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 and ensuring that you guarantee 
what you need for your customers uh, uh, while navigating this landscape is very, it's very, very hard. And, 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 and it usually comes back to bite a lot of, a lot of companies. Some of them move, have, have, uh, have, you know, moved to, to platform engineering where they have a dedicated team uh, building out an internal developer platform, you know, an IDP to shield developers from all of this com complexity. And that's, that, and, that's, and that's great. I think that's really a step in the right direction. I'll come back to that later in this presentation. Uh, Stephen O'Grady at Redmond, you know, he, re he wrote this paper called Vertical Integration, the Collision of the App Platforms and Database. And, and, and you know, one, one, uh, one quote here that I think is very, is very true and sets the stage a lot very well for what I'm going to want to talk about here is, is this one where he says that there, is, there are already too many primitives for engineers to deeply understand and manage them all, and more arrive by the day. And even if that were not the case, there's too lit, little upside for the overwhelming majority of organizations to select, implement, integrate, operate, and secure every last component or service. Time spent managing enterprise infrastructure is time not spent building out your own business. You know, many are stuck uh, with an enterprise stack that they have to, you know, build and manage and operate and evolve themselves. And, and it can easily grow quite, quite complex. This is actually probably a simplified uh, architecture here. But here you have, you know, everything from load balancer, ingress router, caches, you know, add the app logic and the frameworks or libraries you have there. You have event brokers, you have databases, often many of them, depending on the type of use case that, that you have, that, 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 that you have. And it becomes increasingly hard, you know, and, and this, pay, this uh, uh, you know, piece, uh, this image completely uh, uh, ignores all, in everything you need to, to, to run to operate it well. Uh, which is also, uh, you know, uh, a quite uh, different story that that has a lot of complexity to it. So to sum up, it's it's usually very very hard. And you know, I remember then when, when AWS Lambda came out, you know, and and that sets the stage. Or it was the so the inception of of of, ser of serverless. It was, you know, I think serverless is really revolutionary. It sets, it really points towards the future. In my world, uh, the way I think about things is that serverless is not a product. It's not a specific technique or way of doing things either. It's definitely not fa fast fa fa function as a service. That was the first incarnation of serverless. But I, I, I think it's, it's a developer experience. It's a new way of thinking about the cloud and how to, uh, how to develop for the cloud. And, uh, you know, I... I so I really think that it, it, was, it was a seed for a new way of thinking how to develop for the cloud and something that we can continue to build upon uh, with, a, with a common vision and goal in mind. And, um, you know, many cloud products have adopted ser ser serverless. Uh, indiv in individually. I mean, there's databases, there's serverless, there's serverless message brokers, serverless caches, serverless X, Y, and Z. And that's, that's, that's great, but it's, it still leaves developers with a complex in the integration pro uh, project, because even if all, this, the serverless, all, all these APIs and products are serverless individually by themselves, the whole system as a whole is not serverless. You still need to stitch things together and making sure that everything works. And often these, these different products has not you know, been 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 tested to work well together. So and and to to ensure guarantees, SLAs, correctness of your data, etc. It still uh, falls into the lap of the developer, which makes this quite hard. Even though I'm not saying that it's a bad thing that more and more products adopt serverless, but it's just one step towards where I think we need to be. So some words of wisdom here in Alfred North Whitehead, uh, uh, you know, have a famous quote that I think very much applies to soft, to our software industry. And, 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 you know, he said quite some time ago now that civilization advances by extending the number of important operations, which we can perform without thinking of them. You know, let that sink in a little bit, you know, you know, 
what is really saying that is we need to yet another time, you know, uh, think in terms of higher, higher level abstractions and, and automate more in order to move fast, in order to advance. And uh, you know, a lot of people talk about cloud as the new computer, and that's great, and it's sort of a good analogy. But if I should take that analogy, you know, you know, one step further, then the problem is, is if the cloud is our new computer, the you know, our problem here is, is that we are, as developers, are expected to sort of still sort of hack the kernel or write device drivers. You know, you know, the analogy here that we are expected to work at a very low level in this new cloud computer. And that is not sustainable by any means. And, you know, Grady Bush tweeted this a, a couple of months ago, where he said that the entire history of software engineering is one of rising levels of abstraction. You know, thinking about how we got to where we are today, you know, starting with, I mean, you know, the, the rise of great operating systems like Linux, Unix, etc., cetera. Uh, and, and, you know, building up the OSI stack, you know, Paul 6 and, and things like virtualization, you know, hypervisors that led to, you know, containers and, and virtual machines like the JVM. And then eventually, you know, we have, you know, Docker and, and Kubernetes. And the same thing with, with languages, you know, I mean, I started my days writing machine code you know, or assembly. Uh, but you know, then, then, then we got C and then C++ and, and beyond. And today we have very high level languages like Java, Scala, Kotlin and Rust, et cetera. And, and, it's not, and, it's not, and it's not stopping here. We're continuously sort of climbing this ladder of abstraction. And I think that we, in, in terms of cloud native, we should continue doing that. You know, we should not rest. We should continue pushing forward. And there's, uh, you know, there's light up, up, up in the, um, you know, as, as further we get into this ladder of abstraction. This picture was actually taken by my son. And I, I so I, I thought it was quite apt for this, for this slide. Uh, and in order to do so, you know, I think we need to let go of control. The thing is that we as developers, we're, we're used to control. We're used to be able to have every single knob under our, our, our fingers. And, and that gives us power, you know, we feel enabled by it. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's sometimes very useful. But I think we reach such a maturity today in terms of the product that it's, it's okay to delegate. We should have the trust to delegate a lot, you know, because as the more we can delegate, the more we free up time and energy to focus on core business value, which is a good thing, you know. So, so th that's something that I, you know, that I will, will like every developer to think a little bit about. I mean, what is it, what are the things that I absolutely need to control, and what what are the things that it's okay to delegate? And you know, the last years we, we moved we moved from self managed on premise, where we as developers had to had to own and manage uh, you know, everything in the whole application stack and the whole infrastructure stack. Everything from code, frameworks, database, transport, security, Kubernetes, operating system, virtualizations, down to the service storage and networking. And uh, you know, a lot of great things were built with this stack, uh, but it takes time, a lot of time and energy. And it puts a lot of, the, a lot of risk uh, you know, uh, at the, uh, for, for the business. Which is why we 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 got we got, we got the cloud in in which in which we we were able to delegate most if not all of the infrastructure meaning Kubernetes operating systems you know all the tools supporting operating it and managing and so on all, all the way down to service and storage and networking but we as developers still need for for the most case in the traditional cloud uh, stack to to continue owning and maintaining the code, the frameworks, the database, you know, the transports and the security. So what I, you know, what I think that we should do is try is, is to enter a world where, where the infrastructure is automatically inferred or generated from the code. Uh, you know, it's where, you, where, the, where the thing, the only thing that the developer needs to care about is the code. The code is king, you know, that's where you define your, you know the business logic. You know your, how you should interact with the rest of the world through APIs or 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 or, or other 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 protocols. You know you define your 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 data model. You define you know the SLAs and constraints and and so on. And 
And from the code, we should be able to generate everything else, you know, really liberate the developers to only focus on pure business value that moves the business forward. So back to this picture. Do you remember this picture? You know, in this in this sort of new world where, where where I'm trying to paint here, you know, we actually don't need any of these tools. We need them, but you don't need to see that, you know. The developer should only have to focus on writing the code and the rest is generated and the platform should assemble the right products in this in this in this in this uh, you know cloud native landscape picture and beyond of course because not all products are here this is just an example but, but that will just that will really liberate developers and the question is then how can we how can we how can we do that you know you know timothy keller famously said that Freedom is not so much the absence of restrictions as finding the right ones, the liberating restrictions. But the question is here, there, you know, what are those liberating constraints? If we should embrace the constraints, you know, we need to find the ones that are truly liberating. And, uh, you know, I, I, in order to, to, to find these, you know, I've been thinking a lot about this from from a developer programming model and you know developer experience perspective. And I, I, I think you know we need to look at, at at three things. You know, if we if if I try to distill the ultimate cloud programming model, at least for me and 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 for you know discussing this with a lot of people, we ended up with with three things that developers can never ever delegate. That you know this is sort of the top in the in the stack, and that is the first the API. How do I or do I do my system rather communicate and coordinate with services, you know, between each other and to the outside world? This the second one is defining the data model. How do I model my business data? How do I model my my business? You know, uh, using things like DDD, you know, domain driven design, ending up with a domain model that that everyone can agree upon and that supports the business well. You know, meaning is structure is constraints. What kind of guarantees I need, in, you know, when it comes to uh, uh, you know the cohesiveness of the of, of the of the of the each, each each service or how they operate together in terms of you know workflows and things like that, and also the query model. How how do I query the our, the data in a in a in a in a like uh, you know systematic and 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 structural way, and finally the business logic. How do I work on that data? How do I mine intelligence act and operate on this data? How do I things like transform down sample relay and trigger side effects on it? Uh, and when, what is this business log? How do I write my business log in a way that actually moves the business forward? Uh, you know, and of, of course, all of these three API data, data model and business logic are, 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 are closely interlinked, of course, however distinct, distinct things. But I think that apart from these three things, the rest, should should actually actually be able to be automatically inferred, meaning automatically generated and fully managed by the underlying platform. You know, and, and this is what we've been have been doing with Calix. You know, that's the vision that's been driving Calix is to build a developer pass, a platform as a service for building APIs, for building microservices, for building you know, cloud native applications and cloud native systems. And, and sort of the leading, the leading principle, principle here has been to have a guardrail, hyper productive developer experience that eliminates as many decisions as absolutely possible, focusing on having the right constraints to set the developer, uh, you probably the listener here free to focus on 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 the things that really matter, the things that really drive the business forward. This this means that all infrastructure is inferred from the code, meaning that is zero ops, no ops. The ops is completely managed by the by the platform. It's fully serverless, sort of next generation serverless, since it's not just it's not tied to function as a service, and the constraints you have with function service, but it's really liberated to build any type of application, and it's fully polyglot. So you, can, so, so you can choose whatever language you like, I meaning it can be Java, JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, et cetera. And it's, it's uh, you know, Calyx is building on the, is standing on the shoulders of giants, of course. I mean, it's, it's uh, it builds on a lot of different products, 
but 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 probably the one that does the most heavy lifting in terms of real time event driven applications is Arca. So it's it's fully reactive at its core to to really ensure extreme low latency, high throughput, and being always available. So I'm super excited by it. Uh, but if I should, you know, try to explain a little bit more what Calix does is, is you know, if this sort of little this if her inf infographic gives you a, a pretty good glimpse into it, you, you can actually go and find this yourself. I'm going to show you quickly. Uh, I'm just going to give you a sort of a, 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 a map how, how to read it before we dive in. But this is available on calix.io uh, slash developer if you want, and you can interact with it as well. But, at, but sort of the bird's eye view here is that everything above this line, this, 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 this blue line here, is the developer's responsibility. I mean, the developer experience, of course, that's built by us, but you, you, you manage that process. You work within it. At the center is the code. You know, code is king here. And, 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 and on the, on the right-hand side here, you have the operate experience, which is very limited, of course, because most of the operations are, 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 are on, on Calyx. But, you know, some things is absolutely necessary to do, of course. But, but, what, but what's interesting is that, you know, everything on top here, I mean, that mainly the code, is generating everything under, under these lines. You know, so 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 under you know what is actually generated is a fully auto-generated reactive architecture. You know that has world-class performance. You know, and it's fully reactive. Calyx implements implements all the reactive principles. You know, have, you have you have a you have a, like a twenty-four-seven SRE operations team that making sure that everything runs smoothly at all times, etc. So, yeah, so. I, I'm instead of going through this slide here, I was just thinking that I should switch to the actual web page and, and see and show you a little bit more of the of the insights here. I hope you everyone can see this. So as I said, you know, it's it all starts with the developer experience. This, by the way, this one is in, in, interactive. So I encourage you to go and look at this yourself. I won't have time to go through everything. But I just want to give you a glimpse, and because I think it really highlights what Calix does for you, meaning being mean being this this system that 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 sort of infers or generates all the all the infrastructure from code and liberates the developer to focus on the essence. So first, we have the developer experience there. The, the only thing you need to do initially is to pick your language SDK, meaning Java, JavaScript, TypeScript, and Scala. For now, we have more coming. Then you did, then you need to define your data model, your your data model. Write the service and, and configure it. Package it up and test it locally, or on you know in inner C I C C D pipeline. That's it. Then you deploy it to Calix I O and 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 let Calix deal deal with the rest. And the code you write, I mean, it looks something like this. This is just an example here. But in this example, we have we have this is Java, by the way. Uh, and and you have you have a customer entity. You simply tag it with entity type customer, you say that what kind of entity it should be. In this case, we're saying, okay, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a value entity. It's one of, of, the, of the different state models that we have. The a state model sort of describes the shape of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the data in a way. I mean, it kind of sets you know, a framework or constraints for, for, for how it's being managed by Calix and, and what kind of expectations you would have on, on consistency and performance and things like that. Uh, then you create your, your records. You know that's your data model. In this case, we have customer and and with name and email and, and create customer, two different simple records. And then we have one 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 sort of endpoint here. You can say we 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 map it with an entity key, and 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 we say okay, this should be you know uh, from this we should generate an HTTP endpoint that's customer slash customer ID. And then, and then it takes a, 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 a create customer command here and, and, and simply run the side effects, meaning updating the state, creating new customer, and then replying done. So, so here, here you have a full API, uh, including the data models so you have, and, and the business logic for that. It's not much business logic here, you can see, but you, you, you get the idea. You can add that straight here. Uh, then we also have a very, you know, very interesting uh, take on, que on on querying. We have we have something we call views, 
and view i mean these go in 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 lockstep here so so this this view sort of supports the data model that you have that you have here a view is simply you know just another pojo you can say plain old java object that that you that that you uh, sort of annotate that's with a table that you're interested in 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 in, in creating and what it should subscribe to, in this case, the customer entity that you have up here. And here, I mean, the only thing you need to do is then create this, in this case, this find customers method and annotate it with the query that, you, that, that, you're, that you're interested in. Here, select star from customers where name equals, equals name. And you can also create a, you know, a public end, end, end point here that will then Create, create service as, as uh, a continuously updated stream uh, uh, that will run until you, until you close it. Uh, and, and the interesting here is that this query is your domain model. Then we, of course, can generate sort of SQL and create a table at the bottom, but uh, under, under, underneath. But you, you still think in terms of these data records and how you should query them not thinking about how it actually maps in terms of OR mapping and oblic relational mapping down to the actual database. All that is removed for you. So really no code is required for data persistence and query. You know, the data is automatically injected into your service on an as needed basis. And, 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 you can, and then you can then query them through these live materialized views. So that's essentially the only thing that, that, that the developer needs to do wrap it up and ship it up to Calix. And once, you, once you've done that, you know, you have, you, have a, you have an operator experience that is evolving, you know, but, but there's, still, there's already a lot you can do here. I won't go to in all, in all the details here. I just wanted to show you, you know, you know, a little bit from what we then do with this code, you know, what is actually generated, everything below the line, as I said. So, you, so first you have an, an auto-generated complete reactive architecture. Meaning, meaning things like, you know, we support HTTP and gRPC for, for, for your endpoints. We provide an ingress router. We have, we have full service mesh, you know, we have all these security mechanisms that, 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 that's fully tweakable, of course. We, 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 we bring in ACA cluster sharding here uh, through the, side, the sidecar pattern. You know, you have, so you, have, you, you have a Calix sidecar that sits right next to your user code all deployed into the same Kubernetes pod, talking gRPC between them. And, and, and all of these <clears throat> sidecars, you know, first, you know, that, it, you know, it, it sort of, it, it sits as a proxy for everything in, you, in your user code and, and acts as your user code, you know, in a way, uh, by, in, you know, intercepting or, or, uh, and, and all, all, all the requests, managing all the data on behalf and sort of injecting it into the user code whenever there's an update and so on. And, and all of these sidecars, you know, form an ACA cluster to making sure that everything is replicated wherever needed. You can shard it appropriately and it's, it's fully highly available, et cetera. Alongside here, we have, we have, we have di different ways to do pub sub. First, we have brokerless pub sub that, you know, that's extremely fast and 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 extremely low latency over gRPC, but 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 if you if you need to work with with external systems or or just prefer to to run everything over Kafka, you know, Google uh, Google Cloud PubSub or a you know SNS or or something else, you know, then you can plug that in here, and everything runs on you know highly available distributed storage. Where we where we provide you know really good mechanisms for both the event logging, and 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 providing these 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 uh, these streaming materialized views as I talked about, the 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 this, the the state models that we currently support are event sourcing, key value, which is a good way to start, and CR and CRDT stands for conflict uh, conflict free replicated data data types, which is a really good way to do coordinate state in a distributed system. But they're all abstracted in a way that makes it you don't need to know the nitty gritty details of all of these things. You know, uh, so one of the benefits of, of 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 running it on Akka and you know having our you know amazing team build this and 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 run this is that you you get really unparalleled performance. You know we have we have down to six six milliseconds for reads and eight milliseconds for writes, uh, which is quite amazing for being a completely general not not a purpose built system. 
we have 99.9 percent uptime and 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 uh, you know there's a lot of customers saying that we have a three three x faster development uh, some actually say more so you know there's there's in this diagram i also you know have have, have laid, laid out the runtime execution of the service won't go into details so this i encourage you to look to to browse this at your own pace but you're taking that code those two you know, the the entity and the view and and, and showing how it's actually running through the the you know the architecture that i just showed uh, showed you in the beginning uh you know calyx implements all reactor principles you know something you can look into if you haven't looked if you don't know what reactor principles are you know uh you can go through reactor principles .org and read read more about it it's really good a good sort of set of frameworks for for building uh truly scalable and reliable distributed systems you know like 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 cloud systems and edge type of systems and so on and uh you know one of the most important aspects of Calyx is, of course, that we run it for you. Everything is fully managed by our 24-7 SRE team. And, and uh, you know, it's easy to, to, to not really understand everything that an SRE team has, has, has to do today. So, so uh, you know, these are just some of the things that, 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 that they do on a day-to-day on on -day basis in terms of making sure the old infrastructure is, is, is up, you know, automation, patching, networking, firewalls, you know, DNS, uh, service meshes, and ensuring the SLAs, you know, managing the databases, observability, you know, et cetera, security, of course, and the integration is working as, as they should, you know, the handoff between the different systems is, is, is as they should, et cetera. And, uh, and also, you know, making sure that we, we are SOC 2 and DR, GDPR comp compliant. We, we, all, we also have big, big plans for, for Calyx. It's, it, it, it currently de deploys to AWS in GCP locations, but we're currently working on Azure. And even 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 more excitingly, at least I think you know, being a geek is that you know it will all run on Akka Edge uh, very soon, which means that we will roll Calyx out across the whole globe in in edge locations, which we, which really will will be a way to 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 fully you know execute and and implement this this vision that I have for a long time. You know that you know, the, the cloud and edge are really the same thing. You just deploy into this fabric, and the things run wherever. Uh, they should, uh, which might actually change depending on on access on, on on access patterns or usage patterns and and so on. So so it's a lot of interesting things coming. So this I just want to give you a glimpse of this. Uh, we've been getting quite far in how we're imp implementing uh, Calyx, and and uh, I'm super excited about it too. So in 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 summary, you know we all need to do more with less. You know faster time to market. You know beating competition, ensuring our customers are happy. But we, we need to do that while managing cost, while managing resources, you know, both hardware resources, but also human resources. And of course, everyone wants to be, you know, climate, hopefully everyone wants to be climate friendly and care about the environment. So the energy cost is a really, really important piece in this. The problem though is cloud development has been too complex. You know, we need to find a way to, to continue to yet yet another time in this in this in this industry, you know, climb this ladder of abstraction. Another step or two, I or three, perhaps, you know, ideally. And uh, I think it's it's about time that we find the next cloud native developer experience. Serverless was pointing the way, but I think it's it's it it stopped in its in its tracks a bit. We need to, you know, pick up on that vision again and move to the next step. And I really think the way to do that is have all the infrastructure really generated or inferred from the code, avoiding you know getting into an integration project uh, and and navigating all the complexity that uh, we as developers have today. And Calyx is is here is here to help. You know, we have with this declarative, fully declarative, in some extent, and almost declarative in 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 most other cases. You know, high level super productive developer experience for building APIs and microservices, or actually any type of cloud native application through a polyglot real time and event driven. Event driven is really the key, one of, one of the key here, uh, uh, you know, fully managed pass. And, and of, of course, you know, in our DNA is to lightbed, you know, you know, reactive is strong. And, and, you know, reactive means that you're able to build systems that are fully resilient, that can self heal, that are fully scalable and extremely high performance, low latency and high throughput. 
which is what we all want, right? I mean, we want we want to get the most, make the most out of the hardware, uh, and and uh, which will, you know, as a side effect, reduce the hardware expense, uh, and also reduce uh, you know energy. So so it's all it's all pointing in the right direction. So I encourage you to check Kalix out uh, and uh, let me know what you think, uh, both about you know where I think we should go if you agree or disagree and have experiences on that, but also where you think what do you what do you think we're doing with Kalix? I'd love to hear from you. You can find me on Twitter or we just you can just post in in the Kalix forum. So, thanks everyone. That was a quick walkthrough. What's on my mind every day nowadays. <laughs> Um uh, yeah, I'm signing out. Bye.